Hey everyone, Alex here from BFS Wargaming with another video for you today and hopefully it's something a little bit different. So I've set myself a challenge and uh, it's probably one that I should have done a long long time ago and uh, maybe one that you need to do yourself as well but you keep putting off and that's to deal with that big pile of shame that's been building up. Uh, specifically this is my Primaris Marine pile of shame. Um, I do have some uh, Admech stuff I still need to do and some Genes to the Cult stuff I need to do um, but I've got this primary stuff that I should probably deal with because I've got stuff from the start of 8th edition um, and it's, you know, Space Wars is pretty much my first army um, and I need to get I need to get through this stuff. So essentially the challenge is to try and build and paint to a tabletop standard as much of my Primaris Marines as I can. Um, and that's all of my Primaris Marines going from Dark Imperium, which I built and base painted, or just sprayed with the base coat of Space Wars Grey. Um, and then I've got two box sets and a few bits and pieces of uh, other sets and um, things from Conquest magazine and uh, some easy build kits. Um, too much stuff. And to complete it, I'm going to try and use as much of the contrast paints as I can. Um, I say as much of them as I can because there's some things that I'm probably going to still use the old paints for. This isn't going to be purely full-on contrast paints, um, but the plan is to essentially start off with getting them all built. That would be a good thing. Getting grey sear over them because I want a darker colour of space walls, the, the darker grey, not the not a lighter grey you would get using the wraith bone, wraith bone spray. Um, and then get them all coloured in the space walls grey contrast paint. Use a bit of wraith bone to lighten up some of the shoulder pads to get some uh, Yandin Yo and uh, Blood Angels red to give them some bright colours on the shoulder pads. Um, and then hopefully I'll have what looks like a tabletop ready army at that point. Um, I will have to do the heads because I want to have a mixture of helmets and no helmets. Um, the gold, I'm going to actually be using the proper base paints that you had before, proper paints. Um, but you know, Balthazar gold, Gehenna's gold, um, that sort of thing. So I'm going to go through everything with you, actually what I'm going to have to build and deal with this. Um, I'm going to try and do it in about a two week period, um, just thinking that's probably maybe enough time with the amount of time I'm going to have uh, available to me to at least get them all coloured blue with a bit of yellow and a bit of red on them. Um, but let's crack on, I'll show you what I'm doing. So here is the pile of shame I was talking about. So to start off with, all this here being the Dark Imperium set, um, it's all been built, spray painted with the base coat color of um, Space Wolf's Grey. And that's it, that's a literal I did with it. Um, I have played a game, I think, a, a single game since the start of 8th edition with them. Um, and I have used the Primaris um, Intercessors and Reavers in Kill Team, um, which you may have seen the battle report out there, where the Tau absolutely thrashed them, but we'll say no more about that. Um, so these guys are going to get repainted uh, the same as all the other ones I build up, um, and then we're going to use the contrast paints to finish them off. So that's why I have built. Everything else hasn't been built yet. So let's go through what that, that actually is. So I've got one Librarian, and two librarians. Um, that is from the Conquest magazine. Um, I wanted to get a couple of um, librarians. I find actually the, the easy to build kits, most people don't really like them um, when they want to make something unique out of them. Um, they don't always come with all the extra bits that you can get with other things, but I find, because I'm going to kit bash these a bit to make them look more space wolfy, maybe change what weapons they have, shoulder pads, heads, all of that. Um, I actually prefer just to get the, these to build kits because I only need the one thing that's slightly cheaper. Um, but hey ho. Um, and then I've got some Reavers. So again, another easy to build kit which I bought back when uh, Kill Team was about to be released. And I wanted to get a couple of Reavers for a, um, a, a, for a Kill Team, funnily enough. And uh, I didn't really want to fork out for a full box. So I think I got um, two of these. Um, which ended up working out a bit cheaper and uh, it gave me what I needed um, and like I said you can see those uh, in a back rep and then I've actually got the Reaver set that came from the Kill Team box which again I haven't touched so I've got those to build 
I then have this big old stack here. This big old stack. And uh, I think only one of the intercessors that's on one of these sprues has been used, or say used, has been built. So essentially what I've got is something like 26 intercessors there to build as well. So add that to the pile. And then we've got two box sets. So start with Tooth and Claw. Um, that I bought ages ago when it, you know, when it released and haven't built anything for the Primaris from that. Um, I built everything from the Genius Tilly Colt because that's what I was using to bolster that army. Um, but now it's time to get the Primaris stuff done and finally get a Redemptor Dreadnought up and running and some aggressors. And then the Shadow Spear, which is the more recent box set. Um, so that box is obviously everything's still intact there as well. But I do actually, I did buy some extras for this box set. So I got some um, a second unit of suppressors, um, a, another unit of uh, 10 infiltrators. And then I've got another one of the um, librarians in Phobos armor, um, mainly because they look pretty cool with their cloaks. Thought I'd get two of those running around, that'd be nice. Um, maybe I could stretch for a third, but then I'm adding to the pile. I don't want to be doing that. I want to get some of these out of the way. So that's going to be everything I'm building up. I think roughly it's working out somewhere, I think it was about 1600 points, and that's if I'm just putting in base without doing any upgrades or calculating any, any more than what they're their base loadout would be, um, so somewhere between 1,600 to 2,000, so a decent sized 2,000 point army going to come out of this, and we'll see how quick I can turn it around, um, but I don't think it's going to be easy, even with the contrast paints, and my dedication to painting is uh, nothing to shout home about, so we'll see if I can complete it, we'll see how we get on, but hopefully you guys can follow me through the journey, maybe throw this on in the background as I'm building and painting, you can do the same. Um, if you've got any tips on how you know how I'm going to stay awake and do all this um, over the next two weeks and try and fit it all in, um, or if there's anything that you guys watch and you listen to that helps you get through these stints of trying to push out an army, that would be appreciated. I can try some of those out. Um, but what we'll do is I'll go through and start building some of these, and then we'll paint them. Before I go on to do all the building, what I'll say is what I'm planning to do with the painting as well. So. Hopefully as I go through this, I'll film a bit of it, then we'll speed it up um, so you don't have to watch me laboriously going through, cutting out all these sprues, taking all the mould lines off, and then how to build them, stick them together, pose them, all that, and then get to the painting. So the way I'm going to start off is grey here because I want that darker grey colour. And then we're going to put the Space Walls grey, which I've got two pots here. I do actually have a third on the way as well because I reckon I'm going to go through quite a lot of that um, as every single model is going to have to get absolutely slathered and stuff. So hopefully Space Wolves Grey on top of Grace here will give me a nice darker grey, grey blue rather than a really light blue that you'd get out of um, having Wraithbone as the base, of which I bought the base paint in a pot of Wraithbone. Um, you, this is the other one you can get in the spray can of course. Um, but the reason I went for the pot is because I want to be able to actually um, lighten up some of the areas on the model. So what you'll see on, let me grab one of my marines, here's one I made earlier. Um, so what you'll see on here is the shoulder pad, if this guy will get into focus, or maybe not, there you go. So here's the left shoulder pad there, I'll hopefully fill with Wraithbone. And then I can hit that up with um, Yand and Yellow. And I may do the same on the right side, um, but I haven't quite decided yet because essentially what I want is Yand and Yellow on the left, get that nice bright yellow colour to pop a bit. A um, bit like old matey in the background here with Ragnar's um, colours there. And then the right hand side is going to be where I try and use some Blood Angels Red. Um, I say try and use, I will use it, but we'll see how well it goes. And what I'm hoping is, I can try and use Wraithbone, see if it's too light, um, or use it without, if it's the right enough colour. So essentially what I'll do is, the right hand shoulder, I'll put no Wraithbone down first, then do the Blood Angels red, then see if that's too dark or too light at that point. If it's too dark, of course, I can throw down um, Wraithbone, and then maybe do it over that. 
um, or if it's too light, throw some um, shade on it, try and get it a bit darker. So that's the plan, that's literally the base colours that I want to get done for them being, you know, three colours, base colour blue, yellow shoulder pad, red shoulder pad. Um, I haven't fully worked out what I'm going to do with the, sh the actual shoulder pads yet, um, because I know normally Space Wolves have pack markings, but the Primaris Marines haven't really... I, I, I need to work out what their actual pack markings will be for Primaris Marines if I need to use some um, white colour shoulder pads um, for more of the elite units. Um, the, I know the Primaris Reavers don't really have a colour on the right hand side, they've just got sort of muted greys. Um, same actually on the yellow side, but I want to put yellow pretty much on all of them because the blue and yellow is a bit more iconic and I want to stick with that. So that's how I hope to paint them. I'll go through building them, I'll film a bit of that, speed it all up so you don't have to watch me sitting there doing it all, and then uh, we'll get to the painting bit. But I'll try and explain what I'm doing as I go through, try and show you some of the examples of how I've wolfed up some of the Primaris Marines. Um, and we'll go from there, so I'm going to crack on, see how I get on. Any, uh, any motivation you can give me is brilliant, because I can see this being a bigger task than uh, I first thought. But you know, gotta start somewhere. I'm gonna start on the Reavers and go from there. Reavers done. I say that as if it's an accomplishment, but there's only a handful of them. So it was the five Reavers from the Kill Team box and the two leftover easy to build ones I had from when Kill Team first released. And like I said, bought some easy to build kits just so I can have a couple of models for that. So I've got some to play around with. So you'll notice none of them have any heads. There is a reason for that. Um, I'm painting everything as I can in sort of sub assemblies rather than getting the whole model built and then splashing everything on. Um, I'm still going to do it in sub assemblies, which I normally do. Um, so no heads, and the arms aren't actually attached, um, bar uh, that one arm there. You notice this is going to fall off if I knock him. Um, his blade arm there is actually blue tacked on. Um, the only exception is these two easy to build kits that I ended up gluing on. Uh, because their torsos 
obviously our Reva kits, um, the guns still fit, but part of the issue is um, you only get five shoulder pads, like this left one here, we get that focused in. So the left shoulder pad, you only get five of the um, kit for the Reavers, and you get a load of arms, so obviously you can't use them all properly. So to get around that, we easy to build kit, chopped off the top half of the left arm so I have the actual shoulder pad and then connect the bottom left hand side of the Reavers kit arm so he has a full arm with the shoulder pad holding the bolt carbine. Um, gluing it all together helps because it's obviously you're, you're fiddling around a bit and I need to see exactly where I need to fill in the gaps. Um, it's fairly smooth finish there but um, I'm pretty sure we have to fill in some of the gaps because there's a little bit of essentially glue that's filled the gap which isn't a, a brilliant way of doing it um, but it works and you won't see it and it's a complete kit and doesn't look completely stupid with no shoulder pad or stand out as being incomplete. Uh, so again no heads because it's do, doing this sub assembly. Um, I do have the heads from the Reavers kit here and likely I'm going to concentrate on this top row for the heads. Um, want to give them sort of not complete covered heads because if you look at it closely so the top row if that focuses in if I get it to focus in maybe not there we go so the top row you've got two heads on the left that are completely uncovered which I guess are sort of like what you'd have for your sergeants um, and then you've got the top half of their heads in the next row down bar this one here um, half covered which to me is more wolfy because um, I don't like helmets do they of course not so I have got a load of the kits from um, the old Grey Hunter tactical marine kits you get with space so I've got plenty of heads there so I might try and swap some of those out as well and give them a, a wolfy feel um, I also have let me grab one of my kill team ones to try and give them a similar effect to what I did for my kill team marines so um, without knocking the camera over. Um, what I ended up doing on here, it's not a GW head, it's a different head, um, but it's a similar effect I want to give to those guys, so give them a shouty head if possible, because that's the most wolfy thing, um, but give them that revealed head because that looks much more space wolf-like than having a full-on helmet. And there we go, so that is as far as I'm building these models before I start painting them get the arm back in place and uh, I'm, I'm rather than just getting these ones painted with the base paint the grace here I'm gonna then go through try and build up as much as I can out of the other models I need to do because um, the weather's been pretty pants lately and uh, I, I want to do this properly so I'm gonna wait for a good day um, but it means more time building models than I can just blitz through a bunch of them with the grace here when the, when the weather's a bit better so I've got a load of intercessors I need to, to finish off, some librarians, and then once I've done that I can actually start on the kits that I bought, the um, the big box sets, but I want to try and get the bulk of these guys out of the way first because these are easy to build kits, um, I'm probably going to build them and then just add a, a couple bits to them to try and warp them up a bit, um, but there's going to be a lot of repeated poses in there, um, maybe swap them out a bit, maybe give them some of the blades from the reavers, that sort of thing. So. Stay tuned and you'll hopefully see some of the uh, more wolfy intercessors I can create.
Okay, so that's the first lot of my intercessors built up. As you can see, it's the three you get on the um, East Build Sprue. Um, what I've done is converted a couple of them already to show you the sort of ideas I've got. So uh, this guy on the left here, there's not really much I can do to convert them because they're poses holding the gun two-handed. Um, rather than having to do some really heavy cutting to that, um, I'm going to leave all these guys the same with those guns, but just put some um, things like wolf pelts, um, anything else that, that I can fit on them, icons, that sort of thing, to make them look a bit more wolfy. Um, but what I have done for the middle one here, which is originally the, ser the sergeant, and um, the guy here, which is holding the, is the Auspex scanner, um, I've been playing around with those. So this is what I've done so far. So the sergeant model, let's put these two out of the way. That's the original, and that's the one I've done as a bit of a um, kit bash with. So that's literally putting the little bit of an emblem with the blade on the middle, and then if it focuses properly, he's holding a rune sword. I know they haven't really got rules for them properly for Primaris to have these close combat weapons like that, but um, who cares? If it looks cool, that's what we go with. So, like I said, this is the standard uh, Marine with the Auspex scanner. What I've done is I've converted him, same model, like this. This took a little bit more work, because what I've had to do is cut his left hand off, where he'd normally be holding the um, rifle, and then I've had to fit that to his left hand, where I cut the Auspex out, glue the, the gun to the hand, I don't know if you can see it particularly well there, but essentially, yeah, I've had to cut the top of the auspex off and the bottom of his right hand off to get the gun to match the hand. And then in his other hand, he is holding a Space Wolves chainsaw. Get it to focus. Gone too close. The camera does not like it. There we go. So, using the Space Wolves chainsaw on that side. So again, I know these guys haven't really got the rules to be running around with them, but I'm going to be trying to do a lot of the guys looking as wolfy as possible. So again, there's another sergeant model. Again, just throwing icon on his, um, where his stomach is, I guess. He's got his two blades there. Um, and then I'm just going to keep going through them, see what I can play around with. I'm not 100% sure on this one yet, but this I'm looking at is uh, one of the wolfen claws. On the frost claws, um, I might play around with a few of those. That takes a bit of cutting and scraping to get that to fit into place. You've got to slot the wrist in there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack on with these um, intercessors and try and wolf them up a bit, and I'll come back with hopefully a complete set of intercessors. Um, I've built 20 so far, and I've got another six, but I might leave those six out purely because. It's an odd number. <laughs> I think 20 is probably enough. I've got another five intercessors in the um, uh, tooth and claw box to do. Um, I've already got, I think, another 10 already, so I'm going to be in the point of having close to actually 40 intercessors, which is probably enough for what I want to do with them. Um, and then I want to get into building some more interesting stuff from the other kits. So let's go. Right, so here we are with the intercessors. They're all built up. Again, no heads because I'll deal with those later. Um, they're all glued because these guys aren't holding guns in front of them that I'm not going to sub-assemble them that way. I'm just going to do these guys as they are because it's fairly easy to reach everything. So as I was saying earlier, cutting off some of the hands, moving bits and pieces around. So um, got quite a few of the guys with chain swords. So that's one there, two, three, four, five guys with chain swords. So I mean, you've got to have chain swords with. Uh, Space Wolves, let's bring that into focus. There we go. So, intercessors are done. I've then gone through and. Uh... Right, all done with the intercessors. They've had their conversions done. As you can see, I've got five guys here all with chain swords. Again, no heads, because I'll be doing those separately. I've glued everything else down because all these guys have both their hands open away from the chest so I can actually reach everything on the models. So there's no, not so much a requirement for me to have to um, do a sub-assembly because it's hard to reach places. Um, so this is pretty good. So like I said, five chainsaws, um, 
a bit fiddly with some of these guys who are holding them in their left hand because we've had to cut the gun off them, move to the other hand, put a chainsaw on. So that's a little bit fiddly, but I think it came out all right in the end. Um, also just to add, there's this one guy here that you might be able to work out there on his wrist, a bit more like decorative armour. Um, that's actually the leg armour from a wolfen. Um, thought that looked pretty good, give him sort of a bit more design on there, make him look like he stands out as someone of a higher level um, or higher rank. And then we've got obviously the power swords and the runic swords. Not three of those. Actually, no, I've got another chainsaw guy there as well. So we've actually got six in the end. So six chainsaws, the more the better. To throw it into one side and try not to break everything else while I'm at it. Um, and then I've got another guy with a sword. But I've also given him, with the wolfen, they have these skulls on top of their backpacks. Um, I was able to sort of sand that down a bit and get it to stick on relatively well, actually, I think. Um, it doesn't look too out of place, I think it adds to the model quite well. Um, and then a lot of it, like I say, is, is putting on these um, bits you get from the Tactical Marine set, so having the um, blades and stuff added to them. Um, I've also given this guy a Wolfen hand there, as if he's taken his glove off and he's been affected by the uh, Curse of the Wolfen. Um, and then with the basic um, sort of, you know, the gun holding. Uh, model, I said I wasn't really able to do much other than add bits of wolfy stuff to it. Um, that's essentially what I've done. I've given them, um, they, you know, they've got the wolf pelt hanging off the gun from this one, then we've got um, the sword or the knife added to the side of that. I suppose it's a knife to a, a um, space marine, it's probably a sword to a guardsman. So I've done that with a couple of them, added just these little things to them to give them that extra look of being a space wolf. Um, Marine, um, obviously I'll be painting the colours, so that will help. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I've done with those guys. So it's not a heavy amount of work on them. It's literally just adding a talisman, adding a blade, um, and then the heads. Obviously, I'm going to put on them. Hopefully, will make them look like uh, proper space balls. So I did the intercessors, and uh, while I was at it, rather than forcing you to always uh, watch me or having to speed up a load of video, so it looks like I'm going mental building all these. Um, I ended up doing the librarians as well. Um, the heads aren't glued in, they're blue tacked in place just because I wanted to get a look and feel as to whether or not the beards are going to get in the way, which does seem to be a bit of an issue with Space Wolves sometimes when you want to use their heads. Uh, so both of these heads on these guys are from the Thunderwolf Cavalry kit. Um, and then I've got um, the left shoulder pad from the Space Wolves upgrade sprue. Um, they're with Ragnar Blackmane's um, shoulder pads there. And then you'll see that this guy here again, like I did with the other um, intercessor, I've given him his hand to be like a wolfen hand. So there we go. So it looks as if he's got, you know, his again, he's tainted by the, the curse of the wolfen. He's got you know, his wolfen hand, but he's um, going to be shooting some lightning out of there. Um, and then the other side, I've put on a big old axe for him because, uh, you know, space wolves. You've got to have some axes in there, especially the, um, especially their, their librarians, their rune priests. You want to have a, a runic axe, so he's been given an axe, and that's the model. Then the second one, again, like I just said, Thunderwolf Cavalry head, pro uh, the Primaris upgrade sprue, and then another axe for him. And then that's actually a Thunderwolf Cavalry axe as well, uh, the two headed axe. Um, again, I'll be just fielding that as a runic axe. If, if, whether they have the rules or not, that's what he's going to look like to blend him with any, any of the other rune priests that I've got that have used runic axes. And then, again, I've made a start on the tooth and claw because I want to try and get through this as quickly as possible. I can't film everything. Um, and then I've taken the um, the Primaris Battle um, Leader model from that. And instead of having um, the smaller axe that he has, I've actually given him um, a slightly bigger axe which I believe comes from the uh, Wolfguard Terminator set. Um, it was just sat in my bits box, and I can't remember exactly where it came from, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that came from the Wolfguard Terminator set. Um, slightly bigger axe than what the model comes with, because I thought it was a bit underwhelming for uh, Space Wolf. And everything else is the same. And then on the other side, I've taken one of the Wolfen Storm Shields, 
and glued that onto him as well. So he's running around with an axe and shield, again looking very wolfy, a bit more of a dynamic pose, looking like he's about to charge him with that, smacks him around the head with a shield and go and cut him in half. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the, um, the Haldor ice pelt head that comes with the kit. I might try a different head, see how they fit, how it looks. Um, but again, it may just be a case of at the end of this whole thing, I'm going to go and paint a bunch of heads, see which one looks good, add that to the model. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack on with the rest of the um, tooth and claw kit. Um, I probably won't stop in between them, I'll just build them as I go and then show you sort of when I get to a, at least a, a pivotal stage in, in the building process or um, if there's something particular I've done to them. Um, I mean for the how all that's a slight change, changing his hand over his weapon, his um, storm shield. Um, if I do any conversion stuff, I'll do that. If everything's just a bit bland and it's normal and yet it's nothing new, um, I won't show you that. But uh, you'll get a good view of everything at the end of this whole process, hopefully. Okay, so that's Tooth and Claw all done. So I've already shown you the Primaris Battle Leader there with the Storm Shield and the um, Axe as well. Um, so I'll put him to one side. Um, then I've got the three Aggressors here. Um, not done a huge amount to convert them other than the fact that they've got the old Talisman on um, the belts and they've got the Ragnar Great Company shoulder pads on each of those. Um, didn't do anything much more than that because they're quite big bulky models trying to use things like the um, you know putting swords and, and the knives on them doesn't look quite right especially when they've got the big fists um, I did think about putting some like claws to go on the hands so they've got um, a bit like if you think of uh, obviously Bjorn being a Terminator not Terminator being a Dreadnought having his um, claws taking 
a couple of those I've got knocking around and maybe putting that on there to give them something that looks a bit sharper but I don't really have enough to do all three and I don't even think it would look that great on one of them so I've left that off and just left them as they are um, I think they will look good enough like that then I've got uh, the five intercessors another five um, give them a mixture of weapons try to give them all blades in some way or some um, sort of you know close combat looking um, marines because um, these being space wolves they need to look like they're ready to jump into combat at any point so we've got the guy who decided to pull his knife out whilst he's holding his gun um, had to go of course with having a chainsword and a blade being drawn on one of them because I mean you know he's a space wolf so he has to run around with two swords another chainsword with his bolt gun under arm one who is a bit more like the sergeant pose I guess where he's pointing someone out holding up his bolt gun in the air and then this one is another sort of standard marine um, but I've given him the auxiliary grenade launcher because I don't think I've actually got one of those modelled at all so might as well throw one in there if I ever need it so let's move these to one side and then the final thing the final thing is the uh, Redemptor Dreadnought so with this one um, I've given him obviously the Gatling Cannon but I can swap it out so I've magnetised his arm there I'll take that off I can put the plasma on there we go so I can have him running around the board with either weapon um, I've also magnetised the um, waste on him and of course I haven't glued these bits down so we can close the canopy bit up again for him there I can take his body off take his weapons off so he can come down to a bit more of a compact size if I need to travel around with the uh, dreadnought so I've got the options there and that's him so that's a little bit of work but it was, wasn't too difficult there we go quick and easy to put them together just got to get him uh, base painted and get the contrast plates onto him and see if they work on a big vehicle um, I'm kind of doubtful they will work but we'll see how it turns out in the end so now I'm gonna to have to crack on and do the um, uh, what this what's it called shadow spear so I've got uh, quite a few sprues on that one to do um, I'll come back with you and actually show you what ones I'm dealing with because like I said earlier in the video um, I have bought some more models from the set not all of them it's not a, a duplicate of the set um, it was the set plus a few extras so I'll show you those in a second. Right, so this is the Shadow Spear stuff I need to build now. So, I'm getting there. Uh, to start with, so, Captain in Phobos armor, or Phobos armor, or Phob Phobos, whatever it's, however it's pronounced, um, as a captain. Uh, then I've got two um, libra uh, librarians in Phobos armor. Um, again, I might try and get some axes on these guys because, you know, all room priests must have a runic axe. It's the rules. So um, again, they probably won't have rules for that, but you know, if it looks cool, then rule of cool always wins. Um, and then there's the sprues for more of the infantry. Uh, there is a um, lieutenant in here, of course, because you can't go anywhere without having some form of primary lieutenant in any form. Um, and that's with the three suppressors, um, the three, I think it's the eliminators, the snipers, and 10 um, infiltrators. So that's those sprues. And then, um, as I mentioned before, I did get a couple of extra things with it, um, one being the Librarian Phobos Armour. Um, I ended up getting another um, another three of the suppressors, um, which are all these sprues I've got here, um, and another ten uh, infiltrators still on top of that as well. So there's, um, what, 26, 29, 30, 32 models? 33 models I think I've got to build now in that. Um, and then that will be all those Primaris Marines built, ready to go, and then get them all base sprayed. So I'm gonna crack on through those. We'll get them done, we'll base paint them in the gray sear, um, and then we'll slap a load of contrast paint and see how it goes.
Okay, so that's me all done now with the Shadow Spear box set. Got all the Primaris Marines all built up. Um, I haven't done as much conversions with these guys as I've done with the previous ones. Um, they've got a lot more bits of you know, grenades and stuff already on them, guns hanging off them. Um, didn't really have any particular models I already wanted to cut up and put things onto because um, I've got two of these guys, so the guy who's holding the um, grenade that he's throwing to the ground, get in focus. Um, I was thinking, well, that actually might be quite easy to convert, but like a chainsaw or a blade on him, but I actually quite like the uh, the look of the grenades, so I'm going to keep that. Um, the other guy is holding two guns, uh, I'll leave that. Um, this guy with his. Let's see the focus. So, this guy with the sort of slung gun on one side, the pistol on the other, and sort of um, raising his right hand. Again, I could have chopped a hand off there, converted that. Um, but I'm going to leave that as is. So these guys, the infiltrators particularly, are just going to be painted up like space wolves. Um, like I was saying about the librarians, because they're rune priests and they have to have axes, um, I was able to take an axe for this one. So this is actually the axe that uh, comes with um, the Primaris Battle Leader. Because um, I gave the Battle Leader a slightly bigger axe, the rune priest is the one who's going to get his axe instead. Um, you might also see that uh, the Rune Priest head is on the base. That's purely just because I wanted to paint that separately because it's flowing cloak. Um, it's going to be a bit of a pain, I think, trying to do that whilst on the uh, shoulders. So I've left that off. Um, and then I've also, on the other Rune Priest, um, he's got an axe as well. And this one is from the, um, the Space Wars Upgrade Spruce. This is the not the Primaris one. Um, the older kit. Um, so again, he's got himself a rune axe, and uh, his head's on the base as well. Because the same again, paint that separately. And then the Primaris Lieutenant. Again, like I say, not really converted the huge amount on these guys. He's just carrying a wolf pelt on his um, belt there. It's got one of the little tails. And um, then we've got the captain there, um, which I've just put a tail on the gun there you'll see just hanging off and at the back obviously I've got my um, suppressors my eliminators let's get back in focus I've got my um, eliminators again I haven't attached the guns on the guys who are kneeling down because um, because they've got cloaks and that's gonna be covering up there the front of them I thought I'd just do those separately as well, so hopefully that will save me a bit of time trying to uh, let's get them focus. One second. Anyway, rather than having to keep faffing about with having the arm of the gun in front there, I thought oh, I'll do that separately. We'll paint those up um, and do it that way. So those are still separate. Um, I've glued up the uh, the sergeant and the squad um, just because I thought right, I'll try and do that one as one piece because again he's not got the gun right up against his chest it still gives me a bit of access to that so hopefully that'll be enough for me to paint him up without too much trouble and then um yeah like i said i've got the suppressors at the back um i haven't really done anything on those guys as well um i've left a couple of them without heads um actually one of them without heads i'm going to give a wolf head um you'll see i've thrown some of the helmets on here i'm going to be throwing some helmets on um to the other Primaris Marines as well because I want to throw some helmets in there, they're all completely headless at the moment so I'm going to put those on later um, and that's it, that, that's everything done so then that Shadow Spear box I had two librarians, two squads of infiltrators, two squads of suppressors, one squad of eliminators, lieutenant and the captain. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to um, put everything together on one table so you can actually see the entirety of everything I've built um, purely because I think it's going to help with getting an idea of what I'm dealing with uh, when you see it all in one place rather than the bits and pieces you've seen so far. So I'm going to go set that up, I'll be back in a second.
Right, so that's it. That's all my Primaris Marines, all built up and ready to go. All that's left to do is take uh, this big stick and this double-sided sticky tape and uh, go get them all base painted. So, I'm going to go off and do that. But first I need to pop down to the post office because there's a parcel for me, which I think might be more Warhammer stuff. So, uh, let's see. Right, so luckily my new collection office is actually just down the street from me. So, when I got the box, I've had a quick look. Um, it is more Warhammer stuff, of course it is. I'll show you what it is. Still more, still more come away. There we go. So I know I mentioned at the start of this video that uh, the reason I'm doing this is because of the impending rules coming for Apocalypse. Um, well, it's here already. Um, I probably should start doing this sooner, ready to uh, play a game, but I reckon this is going to stay in the box for a little while until I get to the point of getting all this ready to go. Um, so, Apocalypse Kit, I think um, Pat's doing a video for that, or has done a video for that, depending on when this goes out. And then, uh, to add more to my pile of shame, that's a bit of a glare there, there you go. So that's the uh, new transport for the Admic, um, or battle tank, depending on how you build it. Um, I'm going to be looking to magnetise it, and I've got two of them, because I thought, well, there's literally no transports for the Admic. Been desperate to get something like this in the army just so I can get these uh get all the troops around around the battlefield without getting blown off the table straight away. Um so this looks a nice little bit of kit. I don't have any problems with the design of this model. There's a lot of people out there who really hate the whole craft look. Um I think it looks pretty cool. Did an APC or one of the uh, landing crafts like D Day. You've got you've got to love that with the Admec though, they're they're all about tech. But a lot of the look and feel to a lot of their stuff is really old school. I mean, I mean they're running around with what look like muskets half the time. So uh, I've got more to build, but we're going to concentrate on this primary stuff first. Get this done. I'm going to go get all this sprayed up um, and uh, start the second part of this. But I think I'll end the video there for now because that's going to be a long video in itself. Just doing the builds. Um, the painting is hopefully going to be a bit quicker show you roughly what I'm doing and I'll try and get all of that out without having to film too much of it um, but then give you the, the end result of it so thanks for watching um, remember to like and subscribe if you feel like it you don't have to um, but it always helps and uh, I'll see you again next time see ya